Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? Hey, welcome to our MMA Roasted podcast. I'm here. I'm here with my man. Greg Romero Wilson. Uh, What's up, dude? Back, I just got back from Reno. It was like, dude, I've had like nine auditions. It's like so frustrating because like you do them, you're like, this is great. And then like before I would mess up because I would leave my house and go there. Sometimes I would mess up in the room. You know, like I would stutter or I said the wrong thing or I would get in my head. But now everything's from home. So you could do it like 10,000 times. Yeah, so now, absolutely. So now I know I'm not fucking up the room. And I'm still not getting them. And I'm like, that's what, so I'm like, that's. <laughs> They're hard, man. It's hard. Well, plus everyone else has a studio and, and everyone's doing, everyone else is taking the perfect take too. So it's not like you're only, the only person doing a perfect take. It's like everyone's doing an amazing take. Um, yeah. So I had one last night. Uh, no. So Sunday night, one o'clock in the morning, uh, it says, hey, audition due tomorrow, like eight pages, you know, short film, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta leave at five in the morning, fly back, get back, pick up my daughter from school. I took her to the mall, took her to a dance class, learn these lines. My wife's like, pay attention to me. You know, basically like, I mean, I, I need to pay attention to my wife. We need to be a good husband. I, uh, I, 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 let me rephrase that. My wife, I'm, I'm blessed that my wife wants to hang out. Uh, <laughs> Because I, 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 I love her to death. It's right now turning around and looking back right now. Like, 1,000%. Uh, so it's just like all this shit's going on. So I, I finally get it in at like 12.03. The deadline was midnight. Uh-huh. So then like they're like, well, I, I can't find the person to email it to. They're like, oh, it's cut off. So I look up the person. I, I look up the director. I look up all this shit, this whole thing. And then I, I get it in. And then all of a sudden today they're like, oh, we, 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 we made a mistake. It, it was due Thursday. I was like, what? Like, like last that, Thursday? Or no, this like, it Thursday? was due this coming Thursday. Like you have three more days to get it in. <laughs> oh, fuck. So I'm like, do I even do it over again? Because I can do a better job. At the same time, I'm like, I, I already sent it in. You know, it's well, like, I, if you're going to stop them, stop them now and just be like, hey, I'd love to redo this because I was rushing. And if I have more time, I'd like another shot. If you really want it that bad. But if, it's, if you don't want it, listen, you put in the work, you sent it in. You know, I mean, don't a sweat. Time, a lot of times I, I think I'm like fucking Marlon Brando and I send it in and nothing. And then maybe and then other times I'm like, Ugh, and they're like, you got a call back. So yeah, like, that's usually how it works. That's usually how it works. When you think you did terrible, you get the job. And when you walk out of going, got it, you won't even hear from me again. So I, it's I, all I very heard, strange. I heard a crazy story that like, I, I was in a movie with Mark Ruffalo. When I say I was in a movie, I had like, I was like his sidekick for like a scene or something. It was like, right. you know, it wasn't, I wasn't exactly like me and Mark, but it was a long time ago when Mark Ruffalo was first coming out. And uh, he was the nicest guy and he wrestled in high school and he was a big wrestler. He talked about wrestling forever. And in the scene, we were best friends. Um, it was like a movie called XXYX or something, right? So uh, I was in it for like a second. And so, and in the scene, we were best friends. And he acted like we were best friends. And I can't tell if he was like really that great of a guy or it was just like he was getting at the character. Because we were having, like, <laughs> But he told well, it's, me. But he's probably me, a little bit of both. It's probably a little bit of both. Right, right. But he told me he auditioned for 21 Jump Street uh, against Richard Grieco's part. And Greco walked out of the room and goes, guys, go home. I got this. And then got it. So I was going to say, I've done that before <laughs> as a joke and didn't get it. And I was pretty sure it's because I stupidly walked out of the room. But they didn't realize we'd been goofing about that in the waiting room before then. Yeah. And so I just, I was like, <laughs> I walked out, I was like, you know, I'm not, but I mean, clearly I was joking, but I don't think the casting director realized that. And I ended up not. And I'm like, really? Not even a callback? She must have thought I was serious. 
Nothing's worse than when you're waiting behind. You're like in a room full of people who got and like they go into the casting like, "Hey, Steven, how's it going? How are the kids?" And they have this like, and then you're next. You have no idea who the fuck cast person is. And they're like, "Oh, oh, oh exactly." And exactly. they act like exactly. They act like they're old friends. They've seen yeah. each other. They're like, oh, it's so great. Hey, thanks for calling me back. Hey, did you get the? Th yeah, and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm just so uh, thankful for the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I'm just. There he is. There he is. Don Fry, how are you, man? What's going on, Don Fry? Trying to race to the other side of town to see a doctor. Then I got raced to the other side of town to get my passport. So. Okay, so you're, you're, going, to, you're going to South America. So you're going for that surgery. Yeah, I got a, I got, I got a dick's worth of time. You know? <laughs> uh, all right, so what do you know? What kind of medicine? That was accurate. Yeah, you pick it up painkillers? I hope so. I yeah. hope not. I got my painkillers yesterday. So what are you picking up now? Oh, I got to have him check out my my leg. Somehow I got some infection in my leg. So I don't know if I got bit by a brown recluse or a young black widow or what happened, you know. Oh. But I got an infection in there. You know. Damn. You think it was your ex-wife? Pardon? Maybe, maybe your ex-wife bit you while you were sleeping? Yeah. I could have been, buddy. She would have chopped something off her thing in the home with her. <laughs> you know what's funny, Don? Your internet is better dry. It's better while you're on the road in motion than you when you are at home. That's a, that's the wild. Best thing, we got a close up of that cauliflower ear. That ear has been through some wars, man. I I, I love it. All right, you girls got to speak up, please. Oh, yeah, I, I was saying that cauliflower, that cauliflower ear is lovely, by the way. Yeah, thank you. I, I hide it so nobody sees it. You know. Yeah, there. yeah, of course. So we got to talk oh. about. A couple of things we got to talk about. Uh, number one, the fights, obviously, last weekend. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Greg, before we get into that, uh, Butch Bradley posted a picture of you on stage in Las Vegas, and with the caption, "I can't even say what I'm seeing right now." I can't even. Do what happened in Vegas? What was he talking about? No, I. You know, honestly, it was just he invited me on stage. I was pretty trashed already, <laughs> and we just started improvising with the crowd. And he was working my symbol, and that was it. Was just kind of this wild little two man improv thing that we did for maybe I'd say maybe seven minutes. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I just it wasn't like you know I I pissed on the crowd or showed my asshole or anything. I wish it were as salacious as that. But unfortunately, no. We just got up there, and we just did. I did, We did some team crowd work. That's got, right. it, got it. Got it. Yeah. It. Now, uh, now, Don, what was the best job you ever had in your life? Oh hell, I've had some good Who's jobs, man. I mean, like I think um, be a tie between the fire department and the horse showing and pro wrestling. You know. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Now you now over fighting. Pardon? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Too much bullshit. But they're thinking there's filthy promoters and a filthy agents, you know? Fight, yeah, so. that sucks, man. What about you, Greg? What was the best job? Yeah. Ghosted by far doing that network show for Fox. I was working with uh, uh, Craig Robinson and Adam Scott every single day. And they were putting in, you know, every episode they gave me more to do with those guys. I was always in scenes with them. And that was that was the best job. So one of the coolest jobs I ever had was uh, Sam Tripoli got me a job doing warm up for the Playboy Channel, right? Oh wow! And, uh, <laughs> How do I get that job? And I w it was like the American Idol of porn, hosted by Jenna Jameson. This is back when Jenna was like the hottest. Oh. Porn. And these like five girls competed, to, or thirty girls, to win a contract, right? And, and like they like had like who you know who gave the best blowjob, the best this scene, the best that scene. It was crazy. It was crazy. That and night calls. And then I, I had work for night calls, which was like 12 girls naked. Right, night calls, yeah. And uh, so my first day there, I show up and there's naked girls everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what kind of? And I, I go in my, in my dressing room and right next door, I'm next to like where they're giving, uh, they're giving makeup and hair and everything else. And I hear the girls talking about, yeah, I blew some guy and got his, you know, I got his 
pubic hair in my teeth and I hate when that happened. And the other girl was talking about jizz in her eye. And I'm, I'm like, I have like my cup to the, to like the, the wall. With <laughs> this, so like, but I, but I couldn't hear everything. So I'm like, you know what? I got to hear this. Right. So I go into the room and I'm like, so now oh, you carry a drill around with you, right? Yeah. So I go in the room and I'm like, <laughs> I go in the room and I'm like, uh, I'm here to get my makeup done. And they're like, but you're not on camera. I'm like, I know. I, I just, I just want to look good. Uh, they're like, but you're the warm up guy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, but I, got, I just need a couple touch ups. So I sit in the makeup chair. It's totally awkward. Everyone's like, what a fucking weirdo. It didn't go as planned. They pretty much stopped talking what they were talking about, but it was pretty hilarious. I actually got my makeup done. I wanted to see who was talking. I wanted to, I wanted to see who it was. Who was saying <laughs> Why didn't you ask? Um, yeah, then, then like on night calls, they had this contest, right? It was like, it was, it became very goofy. It was like uh, Tom Green's writing partner was the guy that like created it. Re really, really funny guy. But they had like an, uh, a talent contest and one girl's talent was she played the violin with her vagina. I'm not kidding. Like Mary had a little lamb. No like, way. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she had this. No thing. way. I, I swear. And she was good. So they tell me when I walk in, hey, we're going to have a girl play uh, uh, the violin with the vagina. I want golf claps. I don't want like huge, like, woo. Uh, I'm like, I want golf claps for the crowd, right? I'm like, I got you. Yeah, no problem. You know, like, I, so then like she does it and she, and she was amazing. But all I kept thinking was like how pissed her dad must have been for all those violin lessons, you know, that he spent. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands of dollars that he spent. And this hey, at least she's doing something with it. You know, most people just ignore it, put it down, never do anything. So. <laughs> That's a good point. At least she's doing that. Very good point. Very good point. Very good point. I remember they had one thing. They had like a, they had a, a dick contest where they had like naked guy. And one guy had like the smallest penis in the world, and followed by Mandingo, followed by me oh, doing, fuck. followed by me doing stand up comedy on the show. And I was like, wow, that's a that's a, that's a, that's a hard dick to follow. Like it was, <laughs> it was crazy. Are you running up on me again, please? Yeah, you you were in there, showed your dick off. You're right. He was. What happened? <laughs> No, no. I was doing stand up comedy. And now, Greg came on. And now Don did it. <laughs> and Greg came on, yes. That's exactly what happened. Don, did you watch the fights over the weekend? Greg, yes, I, I like did. Don's version of it better. Wow. Okay. A uh, couple things. But, but, there you go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go, what were you saying? But what? But I only watched one of the main events, and then I went home. I said, I don't know how Joe Rogan does it. You know, six hours of fights. Commentating. I just, you know, I sat through the first three or four hours and then I just couldn't do anymore. I had to go home. Well, you've also Sorry. seen thousands, I mean, you've seen billions of fights and you've seen back, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I, I hear you. So the Corey Sanhagen Dillon. You know, that's the way I am, you know, that's the way I am now where I watch the fights actually in reverse because I usually watch them, you know, on, uh, I have them recorded. And so I watch them after the fact, and I usually watch the main one first and work my way backwards because I know that's the those are the ones we're actually going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the deal with Sean Sanhagen, look, I thought that Sanhagen should have got the win, but I didn't hate the fact that Dillashaw Shaw won. It was close enough where you could argue both of them would have won. PJ was pressing, pressing the action. PJ was so hurt in the second round and so cut, I feel like they were giving the close rounds to him because they were like, oh, it was almost like a moral victory. Where it was right, like, he's fighting he's, injured. He's fighting injured. Yeah, and the guy fought with like a bad knee, and I don't know. It was, it was a weird fight. It was like Sanhagen, it was his fight to lose, and I feel like he lost it. Don, what are your thoughts? I didn't see it. Remember, I went home. I went home. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, he just said that like 10 seconds ago. Yeah, I thought, I thought that maybe he watched uh, those ones. And, uh, yeah, I hear you. Uh, Greg, what do you think? No, no. I thought, listen, okay, you, you it's like you say, you put it, leave it on the judges' scorecards, and you give the UFC a chance to make a statement. And I think that's what it was. I think they wanted TJ to be back. And when it got to the cards, that was the chance to bring him back. Corey, and it was interesting because Corey fought kind of, it reminded me of Mayweather. The way it was a lot of moving away and moving away and moving away. And it's funny the way in boxing, that doesn't count against you. But because yeah. octagon control and aggression is a voting factor in the MMA, it seems like they were allowed to use that as a negative. 
against Corey because he wouldn't stand there in exchange because he kept running from him, he kept running from him. I think they, they, it became a negative where I think in boxing, it wouldn't have mattered. I think here they, they saw it as a negative. Yeah, I feel like in boxing, it's supposed to matter too. Mayweather's just that, that more skilled than everybody else. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was a great fight and I'm happy for TJ and I think he showed a lot of heart. But he proved a lot of people wrong. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking with the, with the steroids, you know. He obviously doesn't need them. Um, and I, like I said, everyone – A lot of people know. give you bad advice in that, in that game, man. A lot yeah, of Yeah, I advice. can see that. I can see that. They're like, yeah, just take it, get better, and then you can stop taking it. Yeah. yeah. Don, good got point. caught. I you know what? That's the thing. I, although, TJ, he's got to watch out, man. He's starting to look like Darren Elkins with all that damage on his face. That's the kind of thing. He was saying, oh, yeah, this opened like a few weeks ago. That's going to be a consistent problem for him going forward. It, it, it might be. I mean, he definitely did, did not look like the slick TJ of old, uh, the guy that was like – I mean, he seemed like he peaked against Cody Garbrandt. But even that fight, the first one, he was rocked. He was hurt, and he came back and won somehow. Um, Kyler Phillips, I thought, won. I don't know. I mean, that guy, Paiva, is a tough guy, but – I don't know how they gave it. I mean, I do know how, but I thought Kyler won that fight. That was a weird fight. Kyler, I think, is also in that, like, Sean O'Malley camp of the training partners of, like, it's almost like a young thing of let me get on Sports Center. Let me throw the craziest wheel kick I can find. Let me just do some crazy – I, I want to knock a guy out with this. And it's like, bro, let, let's just get the win. Let's just get the win. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, especially some of these guys you just can't knock out. And you're doing so much energy doing these – Triple Linden fucking backwards, you know, heel hook kick. It's like the old Triple Lindy. Yeah, I got my. Yeah. <laughs> the old Triple Lindy. <laughs> Be careful. That's a, that's a killer. He's the most. <laughs> Dangerfield, by the way, is, in my opinion, the most underrated comic. He never, uh, he never gets brought up. And like, the, I, I don't know if you're called underrated. That guy was celebrated like crazy. I mean, he had a great movie career. Come on. He's considered one of the greats. You think so? He never gets like. Brought up in like top ten lists. Well, because his comedy was was Joker joke style one liner stuff, and people yeah. always think about stand up being this emotional person, you know. And it doesn't always have to be that way, right? You know. Yeah, I know, and, but I feel like that's every a lot of things. Not everybody has that group. Every group has to be Rage Against Machine. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna run in, so I'll be right back. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. Keep the phone on so we can hear it. And I don't know where <laughs> I don't know where McCorkle is. Even the phone in the truck. Uh, McCorkle's at the, he's at the uh, the uh, bank. Um, so all right. Oh, I want to hear that too. Now he's got to explain to his banker why the dogs haven't been able to repay the loan. No, I just want to see him not work. <laughs> get thrown out of the bank. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. By he's the gonna way, be in there. By the way, yeah. on the news yesterday, there's, there's a bar in Huntington Beach where you have to prove that you're not vaccinated to get in. That's a, listen, there's always going to be something like that. Come on. It's probably owned by Tito Ortiz. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the funny thing. That's what, I don't what, know. what do you have to prove you're not vaccinated for? Because I'm there. But there's exactly. A, <laughs> there's a bar yeah. at Huntington Beach where you have to prove that you're not. First of all, how do you prove you're not vaccinated? I mean, you got a letter saying yeah. you're not vaccinated. How do you even show proof of that? Exactly. You That's just awesome. walk up and go, I have no vaccination card. <laughs> like, what, I mean, what, how is that even a thing? Like, I, I don't even understand. Like, you have to show your arm going, see, there's no microchip. No <laughs> chip. Like, Feel around. No microchip. You're good. Like, what's that on your arm? Those are track marks, not vaccination. Mind your business. I, I don't even know. They'd be like, come on in. <laughs> now, do you think it's easier to get laid at a bar with no vaccination or vaccination? What, what bar do you think it's easier to get laid at? Uh, it depends. I say Do no I vaccination. Have a big black cock. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> wait, Greg, what? Because I got a big black cock, I'm going to say it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, let's take it on. I don't know. I mean, you got to think, like, is it easier to get laid at a Biden rally or a Trump rally? Probably a Trump oh, rally. definitely a Trump rally. Yeah, so then I would probably say the non-vaccination. The unvaccinated, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the easiest place to get laid would be like a gay parade. Gay, dude. Oh, for sure. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. you got to do oh. – You have to be <laughs> yeah. gay. I don't think you even have to be gay. I think you just have to be willing right. to try. 
But I have a friend. I have a friend who uh, right. I did. Uh, my friend, I, my buddy Nikki Paris is a really funny gay comic. I we hung out all week because he he was the opener uh, at um, the comedy club, and uh, in my bedroom, huh? No, but he was the opener. So here's the thing: is that I never saw more straight married men try to pick someone up in my really? life. Really? Like a lot of times, like like the word was like gay people. Some some gay people will try to turn guys, you know, turn straight guys like a it's like a badge of honor. I mean. There were like so many straight married men that were like texting him at like two in the morning. What are you doing? Like showing up to the shows like over and over. You know what though, Nikki? He's a really he was a he's a really cute kind of soft looking dude. I could see where he'd be a strong transition piece <laughs> for straight. You know what I mean? Like like you know what I mean? Like you can't get a guy that looks like Don. No, you got to get a guy. That, oh, look at this sweet face. Okay, it's a good transition for me. He's like the starter gay kid? He's a starter gay. Got it, got it. And got I mean it. that in the best possible way. I love Nikki Paris. He's a sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, I'm sure he probably would laugh at that. I think. Just like back in the day, I was like a transition, like for lesbians that were wanting to right. go back straight. I was a good transition straight guy. I kind of looked like a lesbian and, and you know, I'm soft. So, I, had a, I, had I, had a, I had a girl I slept with and then she was like hot. And I called her like, Two weeks later, she's like, no, I'm a lesbian. I'm like, what was I like? Now. I was, I was rock bottom. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think I was the turning point. You were the straw that broke it. She was like, this confirms it. Don't like dudes. <laughs> yeah, I think I was like. You know, uh, Greg was talking about transition pieces. Like, I think uh, Dominic Cruz and Bruce Buffer would both be great for that because they're kind of pretty and they're gay already, so they wouldn't have to talk them into it. Dominic Cruz, uh, I, I you know, know, wait a minute, I got a McCorkle, you've really been focused on, on, on uh, Bruce Buffer, and I need you to get back to Brendan's shop. We're so close to 100. <laughs> We're so close to 100, and you, you, you pivoted to Bruce Buffer, and I need you to focus back on the shop. Yeah, I lost my way at some point, man. It's when my internet connection really starts to I lost my focus. I need to get back on my game. You got to get back on track. So, uh, Darren Elkins, um, speaking of gay. Dude, no, Darren, just Darren Elkins. when you think he's out, he drags himself back. That, that guy, man, there are MMA, there are, um, I feel like there are fighters, and then there are mixed martial artists, and then there's, like, people that do it kind of for sport, people that do it because they're fighters. This dude's a fighter. Oh, like, my he, God, yes. He's, I never saw a guy just take a pounding like that. And then <laughs> not go anywhere. I mean, it's got to be so hard for you. <laughs> Here, hey, why do you got to set him up for these brute bumper jokes when we're trying to make Brendan Shaw jokes? Right. Uh, and he just doesn't go anywhere. I mean, it's got to be so hard to be the ref on his fight because normally you stop the fight against other people. But Darren Elkins, you know he's got a shot to come back, and he, he does every time. Every time, pr pretty much. It's like every time he, it's like he hears me say, why is he still fighting? They need it. And then he goes out there and makes me look stupid. Because <laughs> he just, because I'm watching it. I'm like, this guy, he's an unstoppable machine. Derek Minner, I picked Derek Minner. I thought this is a good fight for him to have a come up and like take a step. And, and he beat the shit out of this guy. I, I think the worst type of guy for him to fight is, uh, is like the, the Ryan Hall or the guys that don't really want to beat you up, beat you up. Right, 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 right. They're elusive and kind of squirrely yeah. and, and want to trap and hold you down and wrestle. They're, and, gonna, they're not going to blow their wad, you know. Do, but these other guys, like, they just <laughs> like, hurt. <laughs> just, what? I just, I mean, fighting him must be like just taking it in the ass. Because that, that dude, <laughs> seriously, I mean, it's just a one big shit storm with that guy. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, it, he just takes you to that dark place that just <laughs> it's, 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 it's that hole. And then once you're in the hole, you just you can't get out, man. I mean, he doesn't even he, he, he never greases, never lubed. It's just <laughs> <laughs> nothing but just raw. I mean, he just fighting him. You you get that guy, you got the shaft. I mean, you ha you got the shaft. It's just, <laughs> 
one thing yes. after another. Yes. He's gonna give you the shaft. The huh? worst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're just slipping a minute out there all night. One hundred percent. It's like it's just, he's got a bone to pick with you. It's just fucking. <laughs> I mean, the guy is just balls deep in the fighting. He's just a he's a competitor, and uh, you can't beat him. Oh my gosh. You can't beat him once he's on top. He's just fucking that rear naked choke. He cuts it. Yeah, up. I mean, at that yeah, point, God. the choice is to beat him off. You know, if he gets on top, you got to beat him off. That's it, the only I, way out. It, no <laughs> yeah. it, you're never going to get just a tip with that guy. It's just, it's all, it's all in. He's fucking all in. I think this yeah, whole conversation's go- hard to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's still listening, they're really willing to go balls deep on this podcast. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's oh no homo. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that saves it. That saves it. That's like, that's like with all due respect or, you know, it's like a no homo, by the way. So, yeah, how is that yeah. even... Can you even say no homo anymore? That was like two years I, ago. I was going to say, I don't even think... Yeah, I think even that's now, now you know... Now you gotta say like full, now you gotta be like full homo, um, so uh, <laughs> so guest homo. So 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 Don, where did you pick up at the uh, doctor? Uh, they gotta check out my leg. I haven't checked up anything yet. But they gotta uh, oh yeah check out my leg. But why are you back in the car? Because. They weren't ready for me, so I came back here to say goodbye to you all. <laughs> oh, there you go. How, how, how nice is that? There you go. Is anybody really ready for you, Don? Uh, uh, no. No. I have two ex-wives to prove that. Yes. Now, now, <laughs> now somebody says that, to ask me to ask you that when you were fighting uh, Takayama, was Ken Shamrock there, and was he screaming stop the fight or something? Uh, you know, I don't know. Somebody said something about that the other day. And I really don't remember because, I mean, I was kind of busy. Like I said, I focus. You know, I get tunnel vision real bad. And so I didn't hear anything going on, you know, outside my, uh, outside my, uh, my, uh, my, my dick area, you know, my satellite uh, <laughs> dick, dick measure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing, nothing makes me laugh more. I mean, a lot of makes me laugh more, but one of my favorite stories about you is when you fought that first guy. The guy was like a 400-pound Puerto Rican guy from New York. Uh, yeah. I don't even know where they found that guy. And then you said to John McCarthy, if he knocks me out, don't let him eat me. Like, yeah. right, right before the <laughs> <laughs> like, Well, like, hell, he was scary. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. Oh, they're ready. They're ready to check out his his his, uh, infected leg. (laughs) But that's like Don was like Don was like he knocks me out. Don't let him eat me or give him the right to vote. (laughs) (laughs) Because he's Puerto Rican. (laughs) But but that's like when you ever see Rocky. When Rocky always makes those stupid jokes, like during the fight, like um, like you know, he says like, "Oh yeah, always, yeah, yeah, yeah." It always says, says something, and you're like, that doesn't happen in boxing matches or fights. But then with Don Fry, it really did happen. So, yeah. you know, Don, I, you ever see that, like, true story of Rocky, the guy that played, the guy who it was, like, based out of the Rocky story? No. So the Rocky story was, like, a real story. A guy who almost beat uh, Muhammad Ali one night. And he, like, like Chuck went, Webner, right? Was his yeah, name Chuck, Webner? Chuck Webner. He almost beat him. And there's a movie about it. Really good movie, actually. I think it's, uh... It's know, called Ronnie. The guy, <laughs> the guy who plays it is, uh... The guy... The great actor. Lee, I think Lee Schreiber plays him. Okay. And, and he, um... And he basically, like, wins... He's, like, a, a guy they just picked, like, out of nowhere, like a journeyman fighter. He goes the distance... Almost, almost beats Ali. Then he becomes a big hero in New Jersey, where he's from. Like he's doing coke. It's the seventies. Lets it go to his head. Spends his money. Blah, just a fucking nut job, right? Uh, and at one point, he was like, and then like he auditioned for Rocky. Like Stallone brought him in to be in the movie. Oh wow! But he was so coked out of his mind, he he like got all the lines wrong. And they, and they they couldn't hire him. Like he was just doing blow the whole night before. And like in real life. Uh, That's brutal. Then he like I, rec- I, I don't recommend it. I, I've tried. Then he gets sent to jail for like 
drugs for like, he was trying to like drug dealing him and he gets sent to jail and Stallone is shooting like over the top, like in that jail or one of his movies in the jail, they're actually shooting it. Like, and, Whoa. They, and they were like, Hey, he wants to come talk to you Stallone. And he's like, no, thanks. I don't want any visitors. He was so embarrassed, but now he's doing okay. He's like selling, he's, he's like doing well now in his life. He's got his life together and this, and that. At one point he like fought a bear at like a, like a bar show or something like, it was just the guy's life was fucking crazy. Chuck Webber. Do you ever watch it? It's a great movie, by the way. I, I highly recommend it. Do you watch it, Sean? McCorkle? All right. Okay. All right. So now let's, let's talk, talk about, about the Yanez Costa fights. Because didn't that win fight of the night? Did that get fight of the night? No. It should have been. I mean. No, I. I uh... Uh, who did? I mean, did Phillips from Piva get it? I don't know. But I that Yanez Costa fight, I thought was really great. I mean, Costa, you know, during that first round, he was piecing him up so hard. I really didn't think there was any path to victory for Yanez. Yeah, he was he was looking like a world beater. But he but they even said like they kind of jinxed him a little bit. But, I mean, the commentators were smart. They were like, "Well, I want to see if he could pick up this pace, if he keep this pace because he yeah. was on. He added in like." He started, yeah, he ga- yeah, he looked like he gassed pretty hard in the second. And Yanez, and he also let Yanez come into range. I mean, that's he had him at distance the whole first round. He clearly had a reach advantage. And then uh, and then the second round, he just let him come right in range and start popping him right back. And I was like, well, that's your fucking fault. The Macy Barber fight was weird because I, I thought it was a pretty decent fight. And I think Barber is a girl that, like, everyone hates for some reason. I don't know what her deal is. I mean – I guess she was like cocky and arrogant, but who's not, you know? Um, yeah. For the most part, I can. You gotta have to be. Yeah, I mean, so what? I mean, what? She's not, she's not hurting anybody, I don't think. Um, yeah. But Mirabi- People don't seem to hold it against Connor too much. <laughs> or Colby. <laughs> oh, but a girl doesn't. Oh, you asshole. Right? Uh, it's crazy. Um, but Maver- Maverick, uh, I thought, won the fight. I mean, she won the first two rounds. And then they gave it to Barber, and I kind of felt bad because Maverick said, "Like I got to go back to my day job now," and yada yada. And I, I, I think she should have. I personally thought she won the fight. Everyone thought she won the fight. Cormier thought she won the fight. Um, but it was, it wasn't the worst decision I've ever seen. It's, the, the problem. And is it was a split decision. I mean, it, I mean it, uh, they set the bar so low that it. That's the problem. The bar is so fucking low. There are so many bad decisions that you're just like, eh. Well, it's not as bad as this. It's not, that's what I tell people. I go, you know, <laughs> someone's like, does your wife ever get mad at your jokes and that you tell about her? I'm like, dude, I tell her the most horrific things in the world. Uh, like every fucked up story I tell her, I, every joke is fucked up. So then the other ones don't seem as bad. Um, <laughs> you got it. It's like, it's like if you hook up with the ugliest girl in the school, everything else is better. You get, you gotta like, right. Uh, McCorkle, are you, th- are you there? Yeah, did you just use the analogy of the ugliest girl in the school when talking about your wife? Because that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're younger, I'm not saying now. Uh, now, what did you think about uh, the Yanez fight, the Barber fight, the Elkins fight? Talk to me, Sean. He's an Indiana boy. Uh, man, I didn't watch. I actually uh, was here and there on uh, watching him. I watched the uh, Dillashaw fight, the whole thing. And I have to uh, remind you guys, I was the one that picked him. I think the only one out of all of us said Dillashaw would win. Um, but like, I was taking no, I said was, I, th- I said he would find a way to win, and I was I thought I'd be wrong because watching that fight, I thought Corey had won on the cards. So because I really thought TJ would absolutely just find a way. So yeah, where's TJ going? won, but I'll tell you what, did he look a step slow to you guys? Because he looked slow to me. I mean, he's fast comparatively, but I mean, he looked at the past TJ. He looked considerably like he lost a step. I think. Well, he did, but did he also blow his knee out? Uh, well, they said. Uh, was that true or not? I don't know. They said it. Yeah, we don't yeah. know yet. I don't think they've yeah. said yet whether no, they or not said he's getting surgery. surgery. No, he said he's, he's actually getting surgery. Oh, oh okay. Oh, so he did blow his knee out. Okay. So, I mean, you probably lost a step, but you don't have a step. I mean, he literally lost <laughs> <laughs> a step. That's the literal step he lost. <laughs> yeah. So, like, huh. yeah. Um, now, uh, so wait a minute. You won't wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I got to go back to this McCorkle. You won't wear a mask. You won't get vaccinated. But you'll signal at every turn. Yes. Okay. Because, uh, I'm in Greenwood right now, and the cops everywhere down here. I mean, they love to harass me. Yeah. I don't know. Um, now, now, Sean, you're always going to the bank, but you don't wear a mask. 
Yeah. Uh, how does that how does no. that work? So, matter, and if they ask me to wear a mask, then they're racist. Um, <laughs> and so they usually back off right away. They're like, "Oh, if you're post testing, it's fine, sir." I'm very okay uh greg can you hear no it, i'm here like like technical like digital notes yeah 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 uh uh r2d to a bj how about now <laughs> there we go now we got you there now we heard so, okay so you go into the, the bank you tell them you're with black lives matter um and then they and then they yeah, leave you alone? The boss better not Okay, all right. Adam, you gotta we're gonna uh, have to Sean, put a pause. Sean. Hey Sean, you um can you uh can you come back when you uh, yeah, okay. All yeah, right. when you get where you're going, log back on because you in transit is is not it's not working. And by the way, um I I love Sean, so this is not me uh trying to kick him out or anything. I just, no, not at all. We're just, we can't hear him. We're not, we're missing all the gold here, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We probably missed three Brandon Shop jokes and two Bruce Buffers. <laughs> we don't even know. <laughs> all right, so. Also, Actually, we do know. We know it was six Bruce Buffers and no Schwabs. He's got to get back on. We're so well, close Bruce to Bruce Buffer him. is like so nice to me. The guy made I know he is, and I love Bruce Buffer too. I don't know. I remember I was, for a minute, I was like, I don't know, maybe let's try a different guy's announcer. Then they started trying other guys. I'm like, no, no, stick with Bruce. Definitely Bruce. But Sorry. Bruce also, like, on my wedding, made, like, an audio thing for me. He uh, did, and it was super cool. It and was super I, cool so, and really long. Like, it went on forever. It was, like, so not, a four-minute intro. So I'm not a part of this Bruce Buffer bashing at all at the same time. I, listen, I'm not either. I'm, I'm talking about what, you know what I mean? I'm, I, yeah. I'm laughing at what, what, what McCorkle uh, said. So, all right. Uh, other fights that happened. I didn't watch the uh, Brendan Allen fight, but I heard it was great. That was the only one I'd have not, I didn't see. Ian Heinish, oh man. He got this guy, Nasordin Amavov, or Amavov. This dude, uh, you know, Heinish is a tough guy. He's in yeah. MMA. Like we talk about his backstory, it's insane. Fuck, man. It, it's hard. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with Ian. Hopefully he doesn't get cut because I think this is like two losses in a row. Let me see. And uh, and his story is amazing. I mean, they I think you're right about that. I think it's just two losses in a row. Yeah, he lost to Gastelum, good fighter. Obviously, no, uh, he lost to uh, Amavov. I hope they give him another, another part, another one, because he's lost four or well, three out of his last four. That's uh, that's how, that's what they call how you get to Bellator. So um, I hope he, he I hope he doesn't do. I, I like him, Mickey Gall. Fucking his submissions, man. If he catches you, he's got the. But he hurt him too on the feet. We've never seen him hurt anybody on the feet. You know, uh, yeah. he hurt Jordan Williams and Mickey Gall. I'm happy because he, he's had the weirdest MMA career in the history of MMA careers. I mean, the, yeah. guy, gets, the guy gets picked to fight CM Punk. Like, he like wins. And he's a complete fight. unknown at that point. A complete yeah. unknown. And look at his, like, look at his resume. Mike Jackson, the guy who got cut after a win for fucking playing with CM Punk, who, like, also, the guy was a reporter, fought, fought Mickey Gall, lost, and went back and still reported the rest of the, the, rest of the night. Nice. Uh, him, CM Punk, <laughs> followed by Sage Northcutt, which is- That's awful. right. And he beats Sage Northcutt, but he loses to Randy Brown. Uh, he beats George Sullivan. He fights Diego Sanchez. He, uh, he loses to Diego, which was crazy. Beats Salim Tahari. And then beats lost, lost to Mike Perry. The guys fought Mike Perry, I know, uh, I, CM Punk, and Diego Sanchez. I mean, that's the, the most insane resume I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's weird. It's it's like they throw him such an odd collection of absolute murderers. You know, I remember the Mike Perry fight. I was yeah. like, oh, this is gonna be a war. Not even murderers. One guy's a WWE wrestler. Uh, Sage Northcutt was like the best looking kid of ever. That's true. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, it's weird. He goes, he, they don't know what to do with him. They don't know if he's like, is he like supposed to like, is he a proving ground, like stepping stone fighter or is he an actual contender? Diego they, was like 40 years old at the time, like was like talking to himself. Everyone, I mean, it was just the, and then Mike Perry literally got almost got kicked out of the UFC for being too violent. And it's just a fucking crazy, 
crazy I'm a, uh, out of the thing. But anyway, so uh, I heard they, uh, I heard they were gonna like do a combination match. And they were gonna give him a murderer and a pro wrestler, but Chris Benoit was already dead. Oh so. God! No, oh boy! Oh well, that, boy! Uh, that, that might be. Yeah, talk about, sorry, the, joke, talk about the joke. I wish had been pixelated because of terrible. <laughs> there's a, there's a, if, if if that joke was a band, it would be all time low. Uh, that's the name of the band. <laughs> So, uh, well, I did know, you know, when uh, when hit Mickey Gall, like uh, he fought that Michael Jackson guy, uh, yeah. after Michael Jackson fought, uh, after Mike Jackson guy fought CM Punk, I said uh, on Ariel's show, he didn't like it, but I said uh, on Ariel's show that the last time a punk laid that many blows, or last time a guy named Michael Jackson laid that many blows on a punk, um, oh my the God, police go. raided Neverland Ranch. So. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's a hilarious joke. I don't care about it. <laughs> your, your jokes are hilarious. I mean, you have... You, this, the the, the 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 fact that you choose to do them at the oddest times are the funny. I, it's just like, <laughs> oh, wow. anyway. um, all right. So Arce beat Ewell. That was the one where I was like, so Jari Eubanks just murdered that other girl. Holy shit! And then Hannah Goldie oh, was the first fight of the night. She she's fucking shredded. I've never seen a more fit human being as a female. Uh, Isn't she you're the one that you said has an incredible OnlyFans? That's what, allegedly, but she got beat. She she came back in the third, almost won, but uh, all for not. Now, well, I guess her own fuck only fans will remain active. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. She's got to keep that money coming down. Yeah. Now, now wait a minute. Now, how come you can't have, you can't look at OnlyFans? You, you said we share an account. What were you talking about when you said that? My wife and I we, we share a bank account. We have our money is in together. Because... Oh, okay. You so, share a bank. You don't have so, any so. other bank accounts. You don't have no. any separate. No. Oh, wow. What a dummy. That's on you. I, I, I'm not – look, I've never been accused of being the smartest human being on the planet. Uh, <laughs> um, I've now, claimed to be. Never been accused of. I've never been accused of. <laughs> now, over the weekend, uh, what happened? Oh, Hector Lombard got into Tyron Woodley's face. Oh, yeah. Got in Tyron Woodley's face at the Bare Knuckle Boxing event, which we got to talk about that, too, because that was also crazy. And – he could, everything he said on the podcast, Hector was very mad that years ago, and I, I had heard the story forever, but I, I didn't want to like say it publicly because I know Tyron, I know Hector, I didn't want to like, but I guess Hector's upset because Tyron <coughs> got a side chick at the gym at ATT, and when Hector was away, Tyron tried to like either get with her and was also putting down, oh, putting down. and Hector was upset about that, that he was like disrespecting him because it was his side chick, and also, he was putting him down to, to, to do that. And they were friends. They were friendly. Hector claims it's because he beat him up in, in, in sparring, and that's why Tyron was upset, or one of the reasons. So this was years ago. Years ago. Well, cut to Saturday night. Hector got in Tyron's face. And you could see Tyron was, like, not happy about it, obviously. But he, I don't think he was scared. People said he, was, he was just, like, annoyed. And at the same time, he didn't, he's, got a, he's making $100 million to fight Jake Paul or whatever he's making. Uh, making a million dollars to fight Jake Paul. Why would he fight Hector Lombard in this, for free in the street, risk breaking his hand, breaking his face, blah, blah, blah. So I think Tyron made the right call. Um, and I think that uh, uh, at the same time, you know, I think Hector had to let it go. You know, it's, it, was, it was not the coolest thing for Tyron to do. And, uh, you know, just so be it. You know, he didn't have to, <laughs> he can't beat up everyone. That, like, Did you just say Hector let it go? Because <laughs> I don't think Hector, uh, I don't think that works in, in the, the equations of Hector's mind. <laughs> Letting it go is not an option for Hector. I mean, what are your thoughts, Greg, what are your thoughts on the event? Um, well, first of all, I thought, I, listen, like I, I even texted you, I'm like, listen, he, he better not act that scared in his face off with, with Paul because he looked... And not to and not to blame him for it. I think anybody with any sensibility would have felt scared. I mean, Hector gets in your face. I mean, I'm watching it. I'm scared. I'm like, who are you better? Hector ain't got nothing to lose right now. You know, you don't want this yeah. guy to go off. So Hector's scary, man. Hector, I mean, physically, he's just a scary dude. And I think you could really see that in Tyrone Woodley's uh, body language, you know. I don't think he looks scared. I think he was just like, get me out of here. I don't think he was scared. It was just, like, uncomfortable. At the same time, Hector, you're right. Hector is the kind of guy that would start winging punches. Just start winging punches. Exactly. And I think I, I disagree. And, again, I'm not 
You, you know, I mean, it's Hector fucking Lombard, okay? You stand there and act like you're not fucking scared when he's in your face and you can feel him radiating this desire of make a move, motherfucker, so I can take your fucking head off. Anybody would be scared. I just think that that was, he was, you know, and also, yes, he has a big, you know, potential $100 million night coming up and he doesn't want to fucking blow that on settling some old beef with fucking Hector Lombard, uh, you know, on Twitter. Over a side chick. Over his side, yeah. So, and I know it opens up. I love reading Hector's part about it. He goes, okay, I was also married at the time and she was not my wife. Okay, I'm not perfect, okay? But this guy, <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm like, but you were also, but you were also cheating on you. I mean, is it really? Corkle, what are your uh, thoughts on this? Uh, man, two things. I don't think uh, Tyree looked kind of like you said, more uncomfortable. I think he, Probably will surprise was that about it. Um, I would say, man, Hector Lombard's ability to hold a grudge is second only to Terry Silver from Karate Kid 3. <laughs> because if he was that, he was that shitty 10 years after the fact, man. Like, I was like, wow, he's, he's really holding on to that. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't let it go. There's yeah, no way to get it. Terry Silver from the Karate Kid 3 reference. That was the <laughs> that, that makes up for your terrible. Uh, internet tonight. That, that's <laughs> what's, what's even worse, dude, is I've got a hotspot, like mobile high-speed internet I actually use specifically for this, and apparently it's not doing well, but it normally, I don't know. It's, it's always tough when you're in motion, though. That's always when it gets a little iffy. Even your, even your internet has bad cardio. I know. <laughs> <laughs> can't last more than a minute in any area of life. Um, now, yeah, the whole the whole side chick was the funny, the fact that they're fighting over a side chick is also like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like he's, he says all that person. Like, look, of course, I was married at the time too, and this was all like, but okay, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but this motherfucker. So Hector Jr., um, Hector Jr., uh, why do you want to fight Tyron Woodley so bad? I want to fight Tyron Woodley so bad. Are you? This is for me. This <laughs> is for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to fight Tyron Woodley because he fucked the girl that I was trying to fuck. But but didn't you already fuck her, Hector Jr.? I, exactly. Thank you. You make my point for me. The elites want you to believe that he is not the fighter. When he is the fighter, I fuck her the first. I fuck her the first. Wait, wait, wait. So he the pig. He the pig. And now I just want to be a little sheep, a little blah, blah, blah. No, wait. So wait, the elites, what do they have to do with this? They make you believe you can make the Twitter and then she has to fuck you. But no, she fucked me. Okay, so the girl fucked you. Now, did the girl end up sleeping <laughs> with Tyra Woodley? Because of the Jews. The, the Jews? What do the Jews have to do with this? <laughs> they are they, the ones that control the Hollywood. No, no. Uh, Hector, last week you said it was the Romans. Now it's the Jews? Of course, the Romans, the Jews, <laughs> and Uncle Ben with the rice. <laughs> Uncle Ben? What did Uncle Ben do? Oh, he's the evil one. He in charge of everything. Uncle Ben, the rice guy? Uncle Ben, he's the bad one. You don't know about him? Oh, yeah, Uncle Ben. You can't trust him. You can't trust uh, the Kiko man, the one with the soy sauce, the Kiko man. He's a yeah. very bad man, the Kiko man. Oh, wow. I had no idea. Hector, how, where do you get all this information from? Oh, I, I, I learned it. I learned it. I look everywhere and I learn. I read a one on the rock. There was a rock. I read the rock. There he is. Every, open your eyes. You are the, the baba ba the little sheep. Oh. Well, Hector Jr., man, it's great to have you on the podcast. Uh, I'm happy. I hope you – listen, I, I know that you want to fight Jake, Jake Paul and you want to fight Tyron Woodley. Now, are you done with side chicks? Do you have a girlfriend now? All of the girls, they're, from the, they're now they're on the front, they're the front, and then some, they're four on the side. Okay, so you have sex on the side and the front. That was all right. That was Hector Jr. Thanks for coming on the podcast. I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of you. Uh, You're going to get me murdered, you cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be on here like Greg looks scared when Hector punched him in the face. We're gonna tell, <laughs> no, we're, first of all, we're going to tell him that Don Fry did that impression. That that was Don Fry. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard of my life. I think he'll laugh. He's got a good sense of humor. He's not going to laugh. He's going to try and kill me. You as, long as, you fuck, look, as long as you don't fuck, as long as you don't fuck a side chick, I think he'll laugh. I think he'll laugh. I think we have to have Hector and Hector Jr. on at the same time. I'll tell you why. Because uh, one time, a long time ago, T Rex did a Hector impression, and Hector was convinced that it was it was actually him. So, <laughs> I'm so sure. 
<laughs> so he was he was laughing his ass off. All right. So, uh, uh, but yeah, if he gets mad, I'll I'll take responsibility and and then um, I'll send. Yeah, then, yeah, yes. I would I would just like to say uh, to my family, I love you. <laughs> uh, uh, to my fan, uh, thank you for always uh, tagging me in your reposts. And uh, I just want to say it's been a great run. It's been a great run. I really enjoyed it. Hector, you know I'm a big fan of yours. Please don't so, kill me. So September 11th, which is probably a, an appropriate day for this event, um, uh, they have uh, Oscar De La Hoya is boxing Vitor Belfort uh, in Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> and they had the press conference today. I don't think that they're testing – for this gig, uh, so I think Peter Belfort. Has Why are they having it on like uh, an island in the middle of the Caribbean? Are, are they having it on Epstein Island where there's no doctors around? It, it's for Triller. So oh, there the, you go. Yeah, no, yeah, there you go. The Triller. What did I say? Triller has become that league. They become the circus league. This is ridiculous. So yeah, so they had a press conference today. Belfort seemed very nice about it. I, he seemed very like you know. He said, "Listen, this, he called De La Hoya the best boxer of all time. He's not. Uh, he's probably in the top twenty, uh, maybe even top fifteen. He, he had a great run." Um, I was gonna say. I mean, let's not discount him. You know, people like to sit, discount discount him as one of the greats because ostensibly he was a pretty boy and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, Oscar De La Hoya was a magnificent boxer and a hell of a champion. Yeah, no, he was, absolutely. Uh, but I think it was more like, I don't think it's the pretty boy. I think it's him in the lingerie, coked up, wearing women, women's stockings. Uh, the cocaine's a hell of a drag, man. Shit, come on, baby. Yeah, yeah I was going to say he's top three all-time cross-dressing boxers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what? Sometimes, you know, with guys like that, you know, sometimes pussy gets boring, you know? You, gotta you, know, what's the, you know what the worst part about that is, right? So he, he took home a girl from Scores, which at the time was like, like the most, like, the t one of the team plays, uh, yeah. Plays. And he went home with her, and he did all kinds of blow. And then she, she, he, he said he had some kind of alias, like he likes to play like Oscarina or something, right? She, she took all these pictures, and then he gave her like thirty million dollars to like not publish them. She blackmailed him, and she took the money and published them anyway. This chick, like he got another off. Terry Silver like move. <laughs> 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 I love how he, he wanted to remain anonymous, so he called himself Oscarina de la Hoya when he was cross dressed. Like nobody thought, oh, well, shit. No, no one nobody put that together. Like, it's like Clark Kent or Superman putting on glasses, and oh, he's Clark Kent now. Nobody really that. Listen, nobody ever called him a mathlete, okay? He's not, he's not an intellectual genius. He's just a great fighter. Oscarina de la Hoya. All right, uh, this Saturday, first of all, this yeah, Bellator is going head to head with the UFC this week. And, uh, you know, Bellator, they don't have many events, but when they, they, but they stacked them. This, this, one, this one stacked. Uh, and the UFC event isn't as, is, I'm still, you know, a UFC guy, lo and behold, I, I, you can't even like put it the same sentence as Bellator, but they got a good card this week. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, this week, Uriah Hall, Sean Strickland, in, in uh, the UFC, Uriah Hall is that guy who is kind of a hothead of a trainer. All his training partners say he's a complete psycho. He's the one that almost beat up that jiu-jitsu guy that was like – that big guy that was like trying to break up – break his arm. Remember that video we watched where the guy did that move? That oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's Sean Strickland. Uriah Hall is a guy that like apologizes on the way to the octagon. He's always so sorry. He beats you up and then apologies. <laughs> like, but he's the guy that doesn't get started to like round four. And then he realizes in a fight and he'll knock you out. He's a very bipolar fighter. Really nice guy. When I, I mean, I've hung out with him a bunch of times. I, the ones I felt terrible was after the award show. Um, he wasn't, he was one of the presenters and we're hanging out and everyone kept congratulating him on winning the award. And it was style bender. They thought he was. And he's like, and everyone's like, <laughs> yeah, and so I'm standing next to him, and he's like, like it was like six people in a row, like, hey man, that's on fighter of the year. And he's like, what, who, are, who, why do people keep? I'm like, they think that you're style, and the look in his face of disappointment, like I had to break it to him, <laughs> like, well, they, like it was, it was rough. But he's a sweet guy, man, nice person. Uh, you know, he doesn't even look like style better though. That's that's what's that's what's racist. 
yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I heard he looks like Oscar Rena style bending. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't really make sense, but I tried. Um, I don't know who wins this fight, uh, honestly, because Uriah Hall has the potential to just. You hear another guy you can't pick against because he'll win the fight you think he's going to lose. He loses the one you think he's going to win. Strickland doesn't have great – I don't think his wrestling is, is – is, I can't think he's more of a striker. Uh, this is a good fight. It's a great fight. A great fight is when you don't know who's going to win. That's what it's a great fight. Uh, yeah. So – but I think that they're – Or it also means it's a fight that really shouldn't be the headline <laughs> match. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those two. One of those two. Either it's so close you can't call it, or you don't know enough about these dudes <laughs> that you should be making them the headliner on a main. Come on, you're right, Hall. Like, okay. I know. <laughs> it, well, someone just told the UFC they don't have to have fights every fucking weekend. Yeah, but these are, don't Greg was like, the best cards. Greg was like, this fight's so close, I can't get interested. Uh, yeah, but these, <laughs> are always, these are always the best cards. Uh, uh, so, also on the card uh, is this girl, Shayan Byes, who's like a little hottie. She's a girl that was bullied in high school by all the cool girls. And then she went into the high school one day and beat the fuck out of the whole school. Like, like beat up like four girls at once and then got kicked out of school. Uh, like, like, forever. <laughs> God, how is she not married to, to McCorkle? <laughs> McCorkle, I think we got wife number three right here, brother. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> uh, she's on this card. Uh, Brian Barbarena, uh, we know him. Ba, 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 Kept getting injured. She's a Native American. I think she's from a reservation. Uh, badass fighter. She's fighting Wu Yanan, um, who's 11 and 4. Also on the card, Ashley Yoder. Smoking hot, Ashley Yoder. Lost her last fight. She's fighting Jen Yu Frey, who is like a rocket scientist. Badass little half Korean. Just a monster. Ripped. Nice person. She's like, she's awesome. That, that's going to be a good fight. Uh, and then Trevin Jones. Boy, that must be funny because, you know, <laughs> she, she's a scientist. She goes back to the lab and, and they're all like, we should do this. And she goes, I think we should do this. They're like, whatever you say. Whatever you say, Miss Fry. <laughs> Dr. Fry. Yes. She's like a hot rocket scientist <laughs> fighter. I mean, she's like, basically, she's, she should be like one of those Marvel superhero women, you know? Yeah. Um, so Ten and I six, all right. I mean, you know. And then uh, Kai Kamaka, yeah, every one of those fights, she was, she was like winning and then loses somehow. And then Kai Kamaka's fighting Danny Chavez. Uh, I, know, I know Kai Boy Kamaka. But these are always the fights that, like, these are always the, the, the those sleeper cards where, like, yeah. knockout after knockout after knockout. Uh, and you're like, holy shit, greatest fight ever. And so I'm, I'm excited for it. But also on that, also the same night, uh, Bellator, Pitbull versus Antonio McKee. AJ McKee is. Ooh, that's a good fight right there. This is for the, I think, for a million dollars. McKee is seven and zero. Says seventeen and zero. Uh, his father was a pro fighter. Antonio McKee never got his just due. One of those guys that like was always like uh, on the outskirts, but a good fighter. And Pitbull is a monster. I mean, McKee just ran through Darian Caldwell in like less than a minute. He's cocky, but he's but he backs it up. He's. He's remember him and Bubba had that little thing going like they were yeah. both the big the alpha dogs at that gym. This if, if AJ McGee can run through Patricio Pitbull, you, you could you could you could make a strong 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 argument he's the best in the world at his weight class because you know they got oh. he's just beating everybody like quickly. Uh, McCorkle thoughts on this? I'm just glad that uh, he chose a real original fighting nickname because. Um, there's so many pit bulls out there. Like, I don't know who's who. Like, wait, that's the other pit bull? That's the pit bull, the rapper? Like, I can't keep track of it. But, um, yeah, no, man, I know he's uh, he's been on a streak. Uh, I didn't know that the uh, A.J. McKee was Antonio or vice versa's son. That's interesting. How old was – how old is Antonio McKee? And he, like, my age? Yeah, he's, like, your age. He, um, he's, you know, he, he runs the body shop, great gym, and he, he, uh, he, he went to bat for Mayhem Miller. He, he spoke at Mayhem's behalf to get him out of jail. Um, wow, that's awesome, man! How yeah, old's his son? His son's like early twenties, mid twenties. I mean, young. And he's seven. He's seventeen and zero. 
He's 17 and 0, and 17 and 0. And he has, and the guys he's beaten, like he beat Darian Caldwell, and I was gonna uh, say he's had good fights. I mean, he he hasn't been all 17 cupcakes. I mean, maybe I mean, the first two or three, but after that, they've been really, really good fights. He beat he beat Derek Campos. He he knocked out Georgie Caracanyan in eight seconds. Um, oh, I remember uh, that. That sucked. He 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 beat, he beat Pat Curran. Uh, he beat. Uh, Weren't uh, we at the Caracanian fights? No, no. We, we, but was we that at, the one? No, but we, 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 we definitely were at some of his fights. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Just goes to show you what a marketing machine Bellator has because I never even heard of it. So. <laughs> Uh, let's, well, the, the key is to move from network to network every six to eight months so that no one knows where to find you and, uh, and to slash your advertising budget every time. Uh, yeah, and then, No, no, the key is to pay guys that got cut from the UFC who were on four or five losing streaks $30 million. Uh, yeah. That's, 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 what, that's the key. because they That's have- where the ad money goes. You give it all to that dude. <laughs> then he fights once, loses, and there you go. Everyone remembers what channel you're on. Uh, also on the card is Usman Nurmagomedov, which I believe is Khabib, Khabib's cousin or brother. Uh, but yeah, he's a he's a he's a, he's twelve and zero. Um, and then Brett Primus is on the card, taking on Islam Mamedov. Uh Chris Gonzalez out of um, Team Alpha Male. He's really good. He's fighting Gadi Yamauchi, who who Bubba beat actually, and then on the undercard, um, uh, Georgie Karakani is fighting on the undercard, and uh, so is Vanessa Porto. So yeah, that's that's. Well, I'm glad Georgie's still out there, man. I'm glad he's still swinging because you know he he had a couple tough losses in a row. Remember, he wanted you to be his uh, his uh, manager. My hype man. I was going to be yeah, his manager and his hype man. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice guy, uh, nice guy, and just a solid fighter. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, so uh, it got announced that Walt Harris is taking on Ty Tabusa. That's the guy that you know eats out of his shoe, right? Oh uh, yeah, he's fighting Walt Harris. Come on, Walt, please, please. That's UFC 267 in Abu Dhabi, and they're saying that in November, uh, the first week of November, they're going to make Colby Covington versus Usman at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I was going to say, I saw this. I was like, well, that's the fight that I know Adam wanted, but they did it. I mean, at MSG? Now, yeah. You, you think that Kobe's going to get booed out of the arena or what at, at, at MSG? Yeah. 50-50. There's a lot of meatheads in New York. <laughs> a lot of guys come from Jersey Shore to watch this Exactly. I, I think he'll be all right. But don't you think, like, in, like, Texas, they would love him? Or in some of like the red the red states, uh, Florida, sure, absolutely, absolutely. But please, there's real, there's red and blue everywhere. I wouldn't, you know, he's gonna have. There's gonna be a lot of people there supporting Colby for sure. And I went to his. And plus that, I mean, uh, are, yeah. are 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 the liberals really that huge in the MMA? I mean, <laughs> you got to think about who's really paying the money to see this. Well, I remember the first fight. I was there, and everybody was was booing. Colby, uh, like it was about Usman, Usman, and then the lights went down, and then all of a sudden it was Colby. <laughs> no, because he's a Colby. Colby. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Which one? Where was that one? Where was that fight? That was in Las Vegas. That was, that was in Las Vegas. Vegas. That was. I remember. I was at the fight. It was one of the best fights I've ever seen. Um, and uh, it was crazy. It was a crazy fight. I, I had Colby. I had it even going in the fifth round, um, I, I think, which I think it was. Um, who do you think wins the rematch, Sean McCorkle? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to pick against Usman at this point. I hope Colby does, but it's real. I mean, Usman, man, after he knocked out Masvidal, he just seems to be getting better and better. Um, it's crazy when these guys that are wrestlers learn how to strike really well, too, man. They get scary. So. Now, what do you think about Colby's accusations of Usman being on EPO? Uh, I mean, nothing would surprise me. Uh, I think Colby says that about everybody, though, uh, that they're on something. But uh, I was always told, man, like, or I don't know, where the street always was, the guys with enough money can pay people like chemists to make it so they don't test positive. You know, like that's what John Jones is doing. That's what GSP did. Uh, style bender, I'm sure. Like, he didn't just start getting a titty on one side on his own. Like, that doesn't happen without testosterone manipulation, you know? So, um, 
it uh yeah it's uh i mean i've always like, like I, would, I never had that kind of money you know like millions of dollars to pay chemists but that's what always the word on the street was with enough money you can uh kind of like vito belfort was testing negative for peds but still had six times the testosterone of an average man like um I don't yeah, know. I mean, look at uh, who was the cyclist? What's it? Lance Armstrong. I mean, uh, that guy yeah. somehow managed. I mean, he you know finally admitted he but don't be the whole time, but he had it in such a regimen that he could you know somehow beat the testing uh, every year. That was crazy. I think for him to come out and admit that took a lot of balls. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. A lot of one ball. Now Connor McGregor. Yeah, I thought it was dumb for him to come out in a minute. I mean, the whole thing was over. His career had ended. He'd moved on, and then all of a sudden one day he's like, you know what, guys, I did it. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you need to be more like Barry Bonds and just take that shit to your grave, you dumb <laughs> fuck. Just be like, nope, like OJ. Nope. He's like, nope, never did it. Nope, not me. Like, yeah, if you're going to deny me, just keep denying till you die at that point. You've committed to it. So Chuck Liddell teases that he's interested in bare-knuckle boxing. Oh, no. <laughs> Who's interested in Bernardo boxing? Chuck Liddell. Oh, I thought you said Trump. I was like, yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Chuck Liddell. I mean, oh, uh, man, I don't want to see Chuck get hurt. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's just, yeah, uh, God. That would, I mean, that Chuck Tito 3 was the worst. That was, the, that was. Yeah, yeah, it looks so bad. But you know what? You know, fighters get bored and they begin to think, you know what, I feel pretty good. I mean, you used to hear football players say shit like that. Like, you know what, I could come back and play right now. You can't. No, you, so, can't. you know, they're looking for an opponent for Paige Van Zandt to get her a win. Maybe it could be Chuck Arita <laughs> Liddell. Chuck Arita. And uh, <laughs> up against Paige, because at this point, she would probably knock him out. So, so did Paige last- lose? Yeah. She, Paige, Paige lost, right? Yeah, yeah. Paige lost. Yeah. Uh, and then my friend Jenny Savage lost, too, which was rough. Um... So last night, Conor McGregor... Wait, rough watched. for who? Rough for them or rough for you? The one rough. who just sat there and watched? Uh, uh, rough for both of us. Everybody involved. <laughs> a lot, that was a lot. rough for me. A lot. The way they got I hit in the her. face so many times. <laughs> so, oh, so rough on me. I remember I could barely finish my nachos. It was so rough. Fucking <laughs> Adam makes it about him. Jesus Christ. I, I, I have to work on... Not making him be self-centered. Self-centered. That's what my therapy. What my wife says. Anyway, so last night McGregor said uh, on, on on Twitter, "COVID is good and father is evil," and then he deleted it. Um, people were thinking that was some kind of a shot to Khabib's dad who died of COVID. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking because maybe it was a, because Khabib tweeted, "Good always defeats evil." Very happy, Dustin Poirier. I hope you'll get the belt end of the year. So that was like, he wrote that July 10th. And then McGregor wrote, COVID is good and father is evil. I don't know what that even means. but Father? I, I think like, that was. And dad? Yeah, father. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was obviously directed to Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody's like, it wasn't about to be. Like, really, who was it? Luke Skywalker? Who was he talking about? Like, you know what? Like, I, I think we just, we. We got a problem with this guy with where he's just addicted to fame and just can't, must say something at all times to get people to pay attention to him, you know? Uh, so last night he also wrote, jumping a guillotine is not a takedown. <laughs> Absorbing the kick into the leg is not a check. A doctor stoppage is not a TKO. The game goes on, bitches. Piss ants, to me, use all R. Not even peasants. Piss ants. Now, get to your station vlogger cameras. You novice bums. Hashtag nobodies. I mean, it, it, it just seems like he's like being a, a, a child acting out. You know. I, listen, I'm just glad that he finally wrote something directed directly at me. <laughs> I, 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 no, no, I'm proud to know that my work has finally reached him and that, that he uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> took the time to address me uh, personally in a tweet. I, I take it very personally. Now, and uh, now, 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 Greg Fry, you lost fights before, but you didn't go on Twitter and complain, right? They didn't have Twitter. If they didn't have Twitter. I hate it. <laughs> but I mean, you lost. You were just accepted, right? You wouldn't go on until everyone piss ants and peasants. I wouldn't accept shit. I could go in there and make sure I won the next one. That's what I do. 
Uh, and the next one was usually just the gas station attendant on the drive home from that place. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy, he'd learn to keep his fucking mouth shut and fucking just pump that again, motherfucker. Hey, a win's a win. This weekend, I'm going to be in Carson City at the Golden Nugget competing in the Kabizi Comedy Challenge, $5,000 Challenge. Uh, you know, contests are always weird. I won some. I've lost a bunch. You know, a lot. There are a lot of factors that go into it, but this one is, you know, is there's no shame in losing this one because everybody on it is an absolute murderer. And so I, and, and really they're all comics I really like and enjoy being around. And so I'm looking forward to a free weekend of, of hanging out with comics and potentially winning a bunch of money. Fuck that. None of those comics are as funny as you. I, I know who's on that thing. It's not even close. Uh, if you don't win it, it's fixed. I, uh, well, uh, thank you, brother. I love it. Right out of right out of the Colby Covington Trump playbook. No, no, I don't win it. It's a fix. It's totally it's, rigged. It's, it's obviously. Truth. It's the truth. All right. So I want to let everyone know. I will be in Boulder, Colorado this week uh, at the Laugh Lines Comedy Club in Boulder, Colorado this week, uh, and I'm at Naples at the Off the Hook Comedy Club in Naples, Florida, on August 19th to the 22nd. We have three days to the pre-sale of the fuck Jake Paul token. The fuck Jake Paul token, okay? I'm telling you guys, everyone hates Jake Paul. Well, I do at least. And, but I, don't, I want Jake to go down to Woodley, but I want the token to go up because uh, this podcast uh, is, uh, we're very invested in the fuck Jake Paul token. Uh, that's the dollar sign F Jake. Join the dollar sign F Jake army uh, and uh, you, could, you could check it out. Okay, I'm telling everybody, the fuck Jake Paul token. Uh, if you're into it, uh, get it. If you're into crypto, if you're not, get it. It goes on sale in three days. The fuck Jake Paul token. Uh, I'm all about it, guys. So make sure you guys uh, check it out. Uh, go to telegram, uh, tm.me forward slash fuck Jake Paul or go to fjake.com to pre-order your tokens. So uh, thank you guys so much and take care. So that's uh